Well, it's been an interesting uh, day. We've been finding out uh, from Kate Costain about her situation uh, being in government. And I believe, uh, Kate, you're already an, an ex-MHK. You, you've done your month already giving your notice. Yes, I have. I handed it in a month ago. You kept that quiet. I mean, we've heard rumours, but it... You know, also rumor, been... you know what rumours are like in the Isle of Man. Everybody always knows everything. <laughs> OK, well, let's let's get into this. I mean, you sent quite an interesting letter out. I mean, I think we all know the issues you've been having. But mm. what's tipped you over? I mean, is it health or is it just you've had enough? No, it was my health. Um, I should have stepped down some time ago. I was going to step down earlier this year and COVID hit and I promised everybody that I would stay in post until it, there was, it was possible to have a by-election so that the residents of Douglas South weren't going to not have representation for as short as time as possible. Um, you clearly pinpointed a few people in your resignation letter. Should we deal with those, uh, the Chief Minister? We can, but I want, can I make it clear, Paul, to start with? that it isn't actually the people, the personalities involved. It's, a, it's the, the way the system allows that sort of thing. OK. Well, the Chief Minister was never your biggest fan. You weren't his biggest fan either. So let's, uh, let's clear this one no. up once and for all. How did you think, or what do you think of him then? I mean, politically, not as a person, but politically and how he's doing. Oh, do you mean in general or just... Well, your, your interactions with him. Let's try that. I've had very little interaction with him um, since I got sacked, to be honest. So I would, I would have, I find that very hard to judge. Um, obviously, when he had COVID, I did send a note to him, which he said he appreciated getting. Uh, but we really haven't, we haven't spoken much since, since I was health minister. How frustrated have you been then? Uh, I mean, well, after all that, and I think it's a pretty clear question to ask you because, you know, you you were right in the middle there in the tent getting sacked and you've, you've been on the on the sidelines now for some time has that caused you massive amount of frustration then um only from a health point of view uh as I say health was the thing that i always wanted it was the only position that i would have taken in the new administration and to have it taken off me without being given any reason at all it still rankles yeah i mean i can't help it it's it always will but I, I always, if you remember the last administration, I always quite enjoyed being a backbencher as well, holding government to account and doing the scrutiny, which is the role of a backbencher. And I, I'd like to think that I, I ended up reasonably good at it. Well, you've, you've also taken a pot shot at uh, the, the civil servants, which we always hear about, and you think they've got far too much power. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah, um, well, I think... I think it's self-evident that if you try to exert your authority as minister, if your chief executive, and don't get me wrong, there are some very good chief executives, I'm not tarring them all with the same brush by any means, uh, but if your exe chief executive doesn't agree with you, if you don't get the support of the chief secretary, you're really out on a limb on your own. You know, he, he's not, he or she, um, I think it's all he's at the moment as chief executives. There's nothing, there's no control mechanism. So th th they're running the show, basically. That's what you're saying here. I mean, oh, yeah. yeah. Well, as I say, that was self apparent from my experience in there. Other people may say it differently. I certainly don't. Um, because don't forget, the chief executives are usually are not a lot more knowledgeable about the department and about the issues than the ministers are. And ministers are there to set the policy. And this is to my mind, ministers set the policy and chief executives and the other civil servants are there to carry out the policy because that's decided by tin rules. I mean, the minister just doesn't make it up off the hoof. It's, it goes through certain procedures. And if it's a big enough policy, it goes to tin for, um for approval. And then the chief, the chief executives and all the other one, civil servants in that department are there to carry out the will of Tinwald, not just the will of their minister. But so if, if, and if that doesn't happen and you try to exert your authority and say, look, this is what we should be doing, this is what you should be doing. If you don't get the, the backup from the chief minister and the chief secretary, 
what are you going to do? You've got nowhere else to go. It's not like working in a normal corporate structure or in a normal small business or anything else like it. The sort of behavior that I've encountered in government would not be tolerated in the real world. It's just like without using, I mean, use the word police state without obviously referring to the police in this thing, but are we sort of, in your opinion, controlled by these civil servants? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's a massive thing to say. I mean, we can see it in other departments as well, presumably when people could take over or whatever, the, the policy is already in place, it seems anyway, to the layman. Mm. Yeah, I mean, it's, I'm not saying every department is the same or every chief exec is the same or every minister is the same, but certainly um, where you have a minister who's not going to um, toe the civil servants line, you're going to have problems because oh. they they can stir up all sorts of issues. They can make you look bad in the media. Um, they can ruin your reputation very, very easily. Now, there's going to be two seats available in Douglas South now. What do you think mm. is going to happen? Do you think it will? It should all be well, I suppose. It will be two seats going to a by-election at the same time, right? Yeah, that's the idea. That's why I stepped down when I did, so that you could have a double by-election because you don't want one by-election and then another, you know, sort of in a short period after it. So it was all sort of time to try and be as reasonable and as cost-effective as possible to the taxpayer and to the residents of Douglas South. And of course, you're Lib Van, so technically now there's only Laurie Hooper in there at the minute. Are you obviously putting forward a candidate and that sort of thing? Yeah. You're hoping for success in that. Will you be helping or supporting? Oh, yeah. Of course I'll be hoping and supporting. I mean, I'm, I'm still Liberal Van, and just because I've stepped down as an MHK, it doesn't change my political colours. But, you know, it's, it's only a year to go, isn't it? So do you think it's advisable for most people to, to show their colours at this stage or wait, do you think, to, until the, the actual general election? That is, uh, that's a real balancing act, and I think that's an individual choice. Um, I mean, sometimes you can ruin your chances for in, to, go, to go again in the general election if you fail. Um, on the other hand, if you're successful, you can increase your chances to get in again at the general election. So yeah, that's very much a personal call, very okay. much a per It depends on people's circumstances and how they feel at the time, etc., etc. I think you said you regretted not achieving as much as you wanted. Yeah. Um, do you want to give us you know, what you what more you wanted to get mm -hmm. through? Or was there so many yeah, things? I, yeah, so many things. Ideally, I would like to have got more changes in the system itself than I did. Um, I would obviously have liked to have seen an independent health regulator introduced. Uh, we, I mean, we haven't got one yet. And I mean, that was in my manifesto for chief minister back at the beginning of this administration. I mean, it's in the programme for government and it's in the legislative programme, but I do fear with just a year to go, I mean, there's been assurances given in Tinwald that it will happen this next year, um, but I've seen assurances get pushed to the side before um, when maybe things aren't kept in, in the sharp focus that I would have kept that in because to me that is, that's a keystone to changing up to changing the standards of our health, the continuing standards of our health services going forward. What do you want to be remembered for? Oh God, that's a good one, isn't it? I don't know. I would like to be remembered as, um, I suppose, somebody who fought for what they believed in. Regard, I mean, people would say, you carry on with that, you're not going to get re-elected. I, I don't care, I came in here to do what I think was the right thing to do. So I, I suppose really that's what I would like to be remembered for. For someone, doing what I thought was the right thing. Mm -hmm. For someone who's standing, though, how much stress is there? Because you certainly were getting some. I mean, you know, there's no question about it. It's taken its toll. I don't know if that's it, with your health issues. I don't want to go into that. That's your own business. But would you say to people, this is a good thing to go into then? Oh, it's a fabulous thing. I mean, yes, it's tiring and it's stressful and, and all the rest of it. But it's a, it's a wonderful position to hold. It's a very privileged position. It's an honour to hold that position that so many people have put their trust in you. And do you know, it's lovely when you actually help an individual and you see that and you think, I've helped that person for, for whatever reason. It makes all the 
sort of name calling and the, some of the stuff that I've had to put up with, it makes it worthwhile. And the other thing that is, I like to learn something every day. I feel cheated if I go to bed and I think, I haven't learned anything today. I tell you what, I need a bigger RAM for my flipping memory for all the stuff that you get, you learn as an MHK. It is a steep learning curve and it never stops. I mean, w will you miss this? I mean, you, 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 there were various things you were really a, a dog with a bone on, uh, Cinema mm -hmm. MX, there was, uh, oh, oh, there was quite a few things. You've listed them all, haven't you? Yet. Cinema NX has not finished. The committee is still sitting. Yeah. I, sh I shall be watching that with interest. I am disappointed that it hadn't come to conclusion while I was still in, in post. I would have liked to have seen the end of that one. Because don't forget, I was working on that for over 10 years. Yeah. Because I was working on that before I got elected. Well, will you so, miss this job? Will you, you know, in that sense, will you be able to keep out of it or will you be uh, sort of adding your bit in and where you can? <laughs> I suppose it depends if something gets me cross. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think anything, anything that draws to a close, any chapter that closes, you're all, there's always going to be bits of it that you, you're going to miss. Um, but you have to be sensible enough. I mean, I know I'm not fit enough now to give the job what it needs, the energy and the vitality and the stamina. Um, and I think it's just time to pass the bat on over. And I suppose I get the best of both worlds, really being a liberal van in because I can still make my voice heard. Um, at our meetings and through our MHKs and through our local representatives or whatever. I, I can still have a voice and a voice for people who will tell me things. <laughs> okay, well, I'll let you go, but I should ask, have you had any bunch of flowers today from anyone? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet, but I live in hope. <laughs>